Most of these old nail sets were sent to me by my buddy Rick. Check him out on Instagram. These things are fun to clean up. I dig the different knurling patterns. The heads are usually mushroomed, but this one looks like someone got angry. This one's bent. Somebody really got carried away with it. This last one looks like it was converted into a center punch. I decided to start by trying to straighten the bent punch. I heated the bent area up with my propane torch and gave it a few whacks. I peened the mushroomed heads back into shape on my little anvil. The heads on these two were fine, I had to peen the rest. Here's how they looked after peening. The next step was the wire wheel. Make sure you always wear eye protection when you use the wire wheel. Right Chuck? Ah! First I used my coarse wire wheel to remove the corrosion. I had to find the best way to present each piece to the wheel to get into the knurling grooves. Then I used my fine wire wheel to polish the knurling. It occurred to me that it might be a good idea to show what I mean by coarse and fine wire wheels. The individual wires that make up my coarse wheel are about 12 thousandths in diameter. The wires on my fine wire wheel are about 6 thousandths. Here's how the knurling looked after both wire wheels. I think the knurling came out really nice on all of them. To square up the heads, I used the platen section of my belt sander. I was trying to go easy on the sections with markings. I wanted to preserve the markings as much as possible. I used my thumb to steady the piece and as a temperature gauge. If my thumb got too hot, I dunked the piece in water. This way I knew I wouldn't ruin the temper of the steel. To round over the corners of the heads, I used the section of the belt above the plat. I did the tips in a similar fashion. Here's the punches after belt sanding down to 400 grit. They were already starting to look nice. I used a wire wheel in my Dremel to clean up the marked areas. I've had viewers ask about where I get the good wire wheels that don't spit wires. Sorry, Magdad uses the cheap wire spitting wheels too. I gave each punch a buffing with the extra fine Scotch-Brite discs. I've shown how I make my own discs in other videos. I like to make them bigger diameter than the ones you can buy. Plus I think the abrasive pads I cut the discs from are better quality. I thought I'd try regrinding the conical points on a couple of these. I used an abrasive coated spherical bit. The one on the left is a factory nail set tip. The one on the right is my regrind. Not too bad, Magdad. Hey Chuck, what's next? Ah! Flitz it! You got it, Chuck. I went ahead and polished four of the punches with flitz. I decided to blue two of the punches with Birchwood Casey's Super Blue. Remember how beat up these punches were? They were rusty, the heads were mushroomed, one was even bent. I think they look way better now. This one was badly mushroomed. This was the bent one. Look how nice the head turned out. The different knurling patterns are what make these nail set punches attractive to me. I'm not sure if I like the polished finish or the blued finish more. Cleaning up vintage punches like these is a lot of fun. Thanks again to Rick from Back Into Service for sending them my way. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.